Hello friends and welcome to another video lecture from Architects Academy Virtual Classroom. Today's lecture is going to be about curing of concrete. This can be a question in your exam like write a short note on curing of concrete. So you can take down notes while you are viewing this lecture and prepare for your exam. So first let us see what is meant by curing and why it is important. So you know that water is one of the most important ingredients of concrete. Without water, you cannot make concrete. The water causes a chemical reaction with the cement and which is called as the hydration reaction. So what happens in case of the hydration reaction is that due to the hydration reaction, the concrete sets means that it becomes hard and it develops strength. Now to for this to happen it takes time so this total strength of the concrete develops around 28 days after casting of the concrete so it is essential that water has to remain in the concrete till it attains its full strength otherwise the chemical reaction will not take place properly so what happens is when the formwork for the RCC member is removed the concrete gets exposed to the air. The water from the concrete starts to evaporate to the atmosphere. Also another thing that happens is that the hydration reaction which is taking place between the cement and water is an exothermic reaction which means that heat is given out in this process. Due to this heat the temperature of concrete rises and causes further evaporation of the water from inside the concrete. Hence, the loss of water from concrete can be because of two reasons. One is exposure to the atmosphere and second is due to the heat generated by hydration. Therefore, it is necessary to cure concrete which means to prevent evaporative losses and to keep control on the temperature of concrete. So, how is this curing done? So, the curing of concrete is done by different methods. So we'll just quickly see what are the different methods and then later on go and see each of these methods in detail. So the first method is called as ponding. The second method is spraying. Then next is fogging. Next is wrapping the RCC member with wet jute cloth. Then covering with plastic sheet. Covering the surface with curing compound. And the last is steam curing. Now in all these methods, what is the central theme in all these methods is that you have to prevent the evaporative loss either by keeping the water continuously present on the surface of the concrete or to prevent the water from the concrete to escape out. So let us now see the different methods slightly more in detail. So the first method which we saw is called as ponding. So ponding means providing a thin layer of water on top of the concrete surface. So this is normally used for curing the slabs. In this method, bund of concrete mortar, or rather bunds of mortar are prepared around the perimeter of the slab and the portion in between is kept filled with a very thin layer of water. So what happens is because of the presence of water, the temperature of the concrete remains low and also it prevents the further evaporation of water from the concrete. So this can be seen in this photograph where you can see that this is the completed slab and these are the buns which are formed out of mortar and then a layer of water has been provided within these buns. The same thing can be seen in this sketch in which you are seeing this cross section of the slab you can see the mortar buns which have been prepared here and in between the mortar buns you can see that the, there is a layer of water which has been kept. Second method is called as spraying of water. So water is continuously sprayed on the surface of exposed concrete. The water tends to evaporate quickly in hot dry climate. So this is especially true in India where we have got very hot and dry climate. So even though we spray the water continuously on the surface it has a tendency to quickly evaporate. 
so it is always better to cover the surface with jute cloth and then keep the jute cloth continuously wet by spraying water on it so here in this picture you can see that the columns are wrapped around by jute cloth and they are being wetted by water by spraying water on top of them next method is called as fogging now fogging is very similar to spraying but instead of spraying the water the surface a continuous mist is created around the concrete members so this saves in the amount of water that is used next is wrapping the members in jute cloth which we have already seen in point b next method is covering the surface with a plastic sheet so many times what is done is that immediately after the slab is completed and it has start it has developed its initial set it is completely covered with a plastic sheet this prevents the evaporative losses from the slab and thereby helps in curing process next method is called as curing compounds so what happens in case of a place where there is less amount of water means that there is a scarcity of water in such cases it is not possible to continuously keep the surface wetted and therefore in such case we are going to use special compounds which are in the liquid state which are either brushed or sprayed on the surface of the concrete now what happens as a result of spraying or brushing these compounds is that they form a waterproof film which does not allow the moisture to escape from the surface so it is as if they are plastic coated or laminated the surfaces are laminated or plastic coated so that the water does not escape from inside the concrete next method is called as steam curing now this steam curing is a process which is used normally for pre cast rcc members so when concrete is to be manufactured in the factory on a very large scale you will see that the pre cast members are kept inside a chamber so this chamber is a steam chamber means that steam is created inside the chamber and the curing because of the uh, presence of moisture within the chamber the moisture from the elements does not escape out easily and therefore curing occurs now this method is a very fast method and therefore it is used for basically mass production of concrete members so this is showing you a photograph where you are seeing a chamber in which these members are kept and later on the steam will be put inside this chamber and the, the members will get uh, cured as a result of the steam now the next question is for how much time should concrete be cured so as you know that concrete develops a strength over many number of days after casting meaning roughly around 28 days after casting the initial strength of concrete is developed in the first 7 to 10 days and therefore the is code that is is code 456 of the year 2000 gives specific time schedule for curing purpose so what is that let us see when we are going to use ordinary portland cement to produce concrete the minimum number of days for curing is 7 days when we are going to use blended cement for producing concrete what is blended cement blended cement means that cement which has been added with fly ash so in such a case the curing time has to be slightly increased to 10 days now sometimes mineral admixtures may be added to concrete to improve its properties in such a case again the number of days for curing have to be increased to 14 days now in india we have got hot and dry conditions in many places now in places where you are going to encounter hot and dry conditions the minimum number of days for curing has to be maintained at 10 days now then this graph is now showing you how the strength of the concrete develops over time so here you can see on the y y axis the compressive strength which is developed and on the x x axis you can see the number of days after casting so as you can see after casting of concrete the concrete slowly starts developing its strength 
till it attains the initial set then the final set and then it goes on developing a strength up to day number 7 where it has already developed a strength which is 3 fourth of its final strength meaning it has already reached more than 70 percent of its strength then it further starts becoming stronger and at day 28 we can say that it has achieved its final strength though you can see that concrete is still further gaining strength but the the strength which we consider to be the final strength is after 28 days so understanding this graph you will see that you have to start curing from this particular point continue it up to seven days and in some cases which we saw it has to be even further done curing has to be further done for 10 to 14 days after the casting of the concrete so this is related to the attainment of strength of the concrete with respect to days i hope you have found this video to be useful if you have liked our video please subscribe to our channel give us a like and also share this video with friends if you have any questions, write to us at architectsacademy at gmail.com. Thank you.